inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi ta'ala min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina wa may yahdihillahu fala mudhira lahu wa may yudhillihi fala hadiyalah ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa taraktu ma'a li mahajat al baydha'a laylaha kana haliq la yazigu anha ba'di ila haliq alladhi barga risala wa tawadda li amana wa nasaha li umma wa jahada fi lahi al haqq jihadihi fi sabili la hatta atahu li yakin ama ba'd ahibati fi la or praises are due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after praising Allah Jalla wa Ala, we also pray for our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. For uh, we've been looking at our numbers of uh, prophets prayers that the prophet were reciting towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were given our permission, they were given their pardon, they were given their retreat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There and then it shows us something of mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is the all-knowing, He is all-overpowering. Allah Jalla Wala, He has all the powers to do and to change everything in the universe. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to look at Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam. Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam, which prayer did he say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but according to history, we are going to take a brief history about Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. It is said that he came from the family of Ibn Ishaq, other same say Ibn Isaw, Ibn Musa, Ibn Abraham. Then there are some other narrations that they come out of in that opinion. But the first opinion is the most uh, plausible because he was a descendant of Sayyiduna Ibrahim's offspring as Allah Almighty decried that in the Holy Quran. In the Holy Quran, then he declared that uh, Sayyiduna uh, Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam. That was the proof which we gave Sayyiduna Abraham al Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam against his people. We certainly rise from we will in degrees. Certainly, you are Lord is all wise, all knowing. We bestowed upon him Ishaqa, Yaqubu, uh, each of those we guided and him, we guided Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam. And among the progeny, the Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, Prophet Sulaiman, and the Prophet uh, Yaqub, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, and his brother uh, Sayyiduna Haruna alayhi salatu wa salam. There are so many lessons that we learn from uh, the teaching of Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam. Akhibatifila, when you march in, when you look at the biography of Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be with those people who are very close. In case they want to ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they need to ask that from Allah azza wa jalla. Nothing that they stops them from doing anything. That is found in Swatu Nahar. Swatu, yes, Swatu Nahar, uh, Swatu Ani'am. From verse 84 to verse 84, then Allah describes for you about that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself again, he, he also say, describes the same thing as well. You see, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is again telling us in Surah to Su'ad. Surah to Su'ad, also Allah Almighty say, the Almighty praised his worshipper Sayyidina Ayyub in his glorious Quran. Truly found him patient. He, how excellent a slave very he was ever out of returning to repentance Allah then granted the understanding to Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam majority of the believers the devotees some of them they lose the sense of patience in times of difficulties in times of hardship in times of trials they just lose their patience they're sober or they don't have sober Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam was a repentant Remembering Allah with their thankfulness, patience, and steadfastness. But for right now, some people, once they get some kind of, of hardship, 
even the prayer performing becomes very difficult for them in such kind of areas. We have seen a couple of people pick up days in you know, areas where you find maybe there's something like a catastrophe has hit, no prayers are uh, being uh, uh, performed in that prayer, the prayer, prayer, so exactly prayer. But in that particular matter is where you have to also uh, analyze that this is the trial of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the cause of his rescue. The Sayyiduna Ayyub and the secret of Allah's praising him. A group of angels were discussing uh, were discussing Allah's other human creatures, uh, human creatures. How those who were humbled and Allah's pleasure, while those who were arrogant encourage his displeasure. One of the angels remarked, the best creature on earth is Sayyiduna Ayyub a man of noble character. Who displays great patience and all remembrance is generous, be, be generous to Lord. He is an excellent model for the worshippers of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in return, his Lord has blessed him with a, a long life and plenty of servants, as well as needy and poor shares his good future and good, good fortune. Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. He feeds the, he feeds, he clothes, he poor, buys slaves to set them free. He makes those who receive his charity feel as if they are the favoring, are favoring him so kind and gentle is he. He believes that the shaitan came to overhear when God, he became annoyed. He just said, oh, no, they can't praise us, my, uh, say, no, are you blessed that to some that much? No, I have to work up like me, I have to work like me. Then, Iblis planned to, attempt, to tempt Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam to corrupt and disbelieve himself. So he hastened to him. He tried to distract Sayyidina Ayyub from his prayers by whispering to him about uh, good, uh, good things in life. But Sayyidina Ayyub was a true believer and he would not tell evil thoughts uh, tempt him, he would not allow evil uh, thoughts to tempt him. This disturbed Iblis so much, even much more. Thus he began to hate Sayyiduna Ayyub even more. Iblis complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Several times, a couple of times, he said that although he was continuously glorifying Allah, he was not doing so out of his sincerity but to satisfy Allah so that his wealth could not be taken away. It was all I show. All out of greed, that is shaitan. If you remember his wealth, then you will find that his tanker will no longer mention your name and his praise, his praying will stop. Allah told Iblis that was that that that, that, that Sayyidina Ayyub was one of his most sincere devotees because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sees exactly what is in the heart of his creatures. He did not worship him because of favors. His favors stemmed from his heart and they had nothing to do with the material things but to prove to Iblis the depth of Sayyidina Ayyub's sincerity and patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Iblis to do whatever he and his helpers wished to Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu as well. Iblis was very happy. He gathered his helpers and set about destroying Sayyidina Ayyub's cattle, servants and farms until he was left with no positions. Rubbing his hands in glee, Iblis appeared before Sayyidina Ayyub in the gaze of a wise old man and said to him, All your wealth is lost. Some people say that is because you gave too much charity and that you are wasting your time with your continuous prayers to Allah. Others say that Allah has brought me this upon you in order to please your enemies. If Allah had a capacity to prevent harm, then he would have protected your wealth. True. To his belief, Sayyidina Ayyub wasalam, replied to Iblis, What Allah has taken away from me belongs to him. I was only... It is trusty for why? He gives to whom he wills and withholds from whom he wills. With these words, Sayyidina Ayyub again proceeded to his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Ayyub. When Iblis saw this, he felt so much frustrated, so he began to, he again addressed Allah. I have stripped Sayyidina Ayyub of all his positions, but he still remains grateful to you. However, he is holding. This story continuously goes on, goes on until Iblis had to go and was asking permission to take power, 
part of Sayyiduna Ayyub's body and to take harm of his skin. Ibn al-Askar narrated Sayyiduna Ayyub was a man having much wealth of kind, beast, slaves, sheep, vast lands of, of Haran and many children. All those favors were taken from him and he was physically afflicted as well. Never a single organ was resound except his heart and the tanker that was left for him to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only left for him the tongue and the heart. No one felt sympathy for him except his wife. She took care of him. But reached at a certain time, then she ran away from Sayyidina Ayubu's home. Bliss went to the wife and told the wife, in the form of a man, where is your husband? He asked her. Then she pointed at Sayyidina Ayub while, she, while Sayyidina Ayub was scrambled on the bed. Was scrambled on the bed and said, There he is, suspended between life and death. A bliss reminded her to the days when Sayyidina Ayub had good wealth. But all this, the wife said, It is all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said to us, Sayyidina Ayub, How long are you going to bear that this torture from your Lord? Are we to remain without wealth? Children of all, a friend forever. Because no friend who came to Sayyidina Ayub except his wife. Why don't you call upon Allah to remove this suffering from you? Sayyidina Ayub with very critical and wise uh, uh, thought, he asked the wife, How long have we been with the wealth? How long have we been rich? Then the wife said, We have been wealth, wealth, we have been rich for over eight years. Eight years, Allahu Akbar. Then Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu said, How long have I suffered this? Then say, the wife said, You have suffered for seven years. Then Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam said to her, In that case, I am ashamed to call on my Lord to remove the sad, suffering or hardship from me. For I have not suffered longer than the years of good health and wealth, and plenty of it. It seems your, wealth has weak, your faith has weakened. You see? Say that it seems your faith has weakened. And you are dissatisfied with the faith of Allah. If I ever gain health, if I ever gain health, I swear I will punish you with a hundred strokes from this day onwards. I forbid myself to eat or drink anything from your hands. Leave me alone and let my, my let me stay with my Lord. I stay on the kiri crying bitterly and with a heavy heart she had no choice but to leave him Sayyidina Ali Sayyidina Ayub alayhi salatu wasalam the wife left him after a certain period Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now Sayyidina Ayub alayhi salatu wasalam he now supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran by saying wa ayuba idhina da rabbahu anni masani ya dhurru wa anta arham rahmin Allahu Akbar when he said and remember when Sayyidina Ayyub cried out to his Lord I have been touched with the adversity with adversity and you are the most merciful of the merciful according to Musafir Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam when he was tempted by Allah he prayed this prayer here. Wa ayuba idina da rabbahu anni masani ya dhurru wa anta arhamu rahmin. And from that time, Sayyiduna Ayuba alayhi salatu wa salam, now having realized that it is he Allah who took the advantage of testing his faith. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily test his devotee. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, many, many areas that were attached to the history of Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam, according to many other areas, then after deciding that prayer, Sayyiduna Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam was not worried for their had taken 
for what he had taken an oath to punish. Then uh, before that, uh, then Sayyidina Ayyub obeyed and most immediately, then his good health was re restored. Meanwhile, his faithful wife could no longer bear to be parted from her husband and returned to Sayyidina Ayyub because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to strike on the ground, then their uh, ground with his foot, then and the spring of water to wash in and cool the refreshing drink. And there we gave him back his family and many along of them. Then Sayyiduna Ayyub was granted back the life. He got children and even he forgave the wife the way he promised to gain her a hundred strokes. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet Muhammad said while Sayyiduna Ayyub was naked, taking a bath, a swarm of gold locusts fell on him and he started collecting them in his garment. His Lord called him, Ya Ayyub, have I not made you too rich to need what you see? Sayyiduna Ayyub said, My Lord, but I cannot shun your blessings. This hadith is found in Bukhari, and it is sahih. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallim.